we got the legal perspective out of the way. Now we're going to talk Twitter parodies, good and proper. From Australia, we have the man who has been to so many for so long, none other than Richie Benno. Um, but unlike the real Richie, who's now re- recovering from a car accident, Dennis, how are you doing? How are you, Ben? How are you, mate? Yeah, very, very good. Thanks, man. Very good. Sean and I are here. Um, uh, Sean's hiding in the corner, too. Oh, yes. Oh, Sean, yes. Sean's always here, just in case something needs to be said in the in, in proper tone um, to correct my <laughs> sort of wavering sporting uh, facts and figures. Now, Dennis, we have obviously chatted to you at length on this on this show about genuine cricketing things. And, you know, we we knew of you as as the Richie Benno character for quite a while. Uh, we haven't officially said it to anybody. Um, obviously, parody accounts, you need to have some sort of, I don't know, mystique about who's who's doing it, what's happening with it, because it is funny. And to a certain degree, you want to think that, okay, not your average person, think that maybe Richie could say that. But it's been quite, you know, as I said to Emma just now online, our um, social media lawyer correspondent person. So yeah. we now have a social media lawyer correspondent person, I think, on the show. You, you, guys, you guys have made it now. <laughs> yeah, we really have. We should actually just stop here. <laughs> Definitely. I am just so stoked with this move forward yeah, in our career. We are covered. Internet radio yeah. is a new stratosphere. I mean, we might even be... Uh, l- listenership <laughs> might just say, hit double figures. Did you say internet radio clocked, Dennis? Yeah, you, you clocked it. <laughs> we clocked it. <laughs> okay, so now... Sorry, Dennis. So I'm trying to actually get a meaningful <laughs> intro with you here. Now, it was perfectly yeah. obvious that you were not Richie Benno because no, but Richie would not be tweeting that much or be tweeting something of such controversial nature and just being so insightful because... Let's be honest, he's a mainstream guy. He wouldn't ever be cutting it like that. So, yeah, I, just if you look, looked in my closet, you'd notice I don't have any <laughs> bone jacket, so it would have been blatantly <laughs> obvious to anybody. Okay, well, just take, take us through, uh, starting with the Richie Benno, why did you choose him as far as a parody account? Yeah, good question. Look, I um, uh, back in October last year, I, I got made redundant from work, so I had a lot of time on my hands, and I think that's a common denominator with all <laughs> a lot of these guys that pop up. Um, I don't know if you guys know uh, Peter Miller, the cricket geek. He, he tells yes. a similar story. He got made redundant, and that's how he got onto Twitter. But uh, I was a big fan of um, – there's a, an Australian football commentator over here, and his name's Dennis Cometti, and he has a parody mm. account, which is probably the funniest one that I know of. And uh, he had 20,000-odd followers, and I, I thought I was funnier than him, so I started nice. looking for it. Yeah, yeah. You, you need um, belief in life. I like it. It's going to be a slightly so competitive edge when you sell yourself comedically as well. Yeah, that's that's right. It's, it's yeah. self-evident I was funnier than him. So I, I, uh, I, I guess I went looking for something in cricket that um, would cut across boundaries and just wouldn't be linked to Australia or domestically here. And um, Richie was the one that made sense. And I had to look around and there really was. There was a few Richies out there, but none that were funny. So um, and then, <laughs> so I thought I'd have a go. And um, no, you, it, you're, you're right. And and just just to cut, to cut in there, I think as soon as someone's made a parody account that's funnier than yours, the law should be you should kill yours instantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, the, there was a time there. There's, so the other Richie Benno one out. It's Richie Benno one if you mm. follow him. But he and I had some really fun and interesting banter for quite some time. So hats off to him. And then there was a, uh, a hashtag that started Real Richie to work out which one of us was the Real Richie. Um, <laughs> so that went on for a while. Uh, but that's, that's how it all started. And, and um, the, the big jump came. I didn't really have that many followers, but um, it was slowly building and a couple of cricketers locally started to banter with me. Michael Bevan was one and Stewie McGill. Um, but banter with you as in thinking you are Richie? No, no, huh. no. No, they're not, they're not dickheads. But <laughs> they're, they're quite clever. They worked it out pretty um, seriously. It was mainly the subcontinent that couldn't get it and mm. then um, some UK newspapers. But um, I, <laughs> I, put a, I put a tweet out that at the time I didn't quite understand where it would go, but I wrote something along the lines of um, receive my first death threat today. Just be patient, my dear friend. I'm in my 80s. It'll happen soon enough. I remember reading that, uh, yeah. Something along the lines of that. Anyhow, Ricky Gervais somehow got his hands on it and retweeted it to his 5 million followers. And overnight That'll it went from, <laughs> from 500 people to, to 10,000 or 15,000, literally. Mm-hmm. And I remember the night because I, I uh, back then I had my, my phone and it used to beep at me every time I got a new follower. And it used to be the most exciting thing because I'd get one every, every week. But that night, the thing just went beep, 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 yeah. <laughs> as it went nuts. So that's where it all sort of started. And then... Um, that tweet got published, I think, in four or five newspapers. A couple of the Australian ones as well in Queensland and Adelaide published it. And then uh, 
Um, actually, it was the Adelaide one that published it. Every other idiot newspaper had published that tweet as Richie, but they'd worked out I was a fake because mm. they actually did some research and opened my bio. But <laughs> um, and that's sort of where it all started, and off it went, and it just became a, a fun hobby rather than anything else. But um, it's quite no it's quite ambition. astonishing uh, that the one journalistic body just did the, the research by opening your bio. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them just took it as golden. The headline well, in. It just, you know, I think use limited have set the standard, and <laughs> that's where it goes. So okay. that, that's that's really sort of how it all kicked off, and then um, I, I, I don't know. Look, I, I, to, you know, I, was, I was a bit tongue in cheek before. I don't actually think I was that funny. I just think I stuck to typing tweets as Richie may say them if it was Richie. Well, that's the and thing. I, I mean, I think your, your tone was dead on. Um, did a lot of the influence come from the Twelfth Man? Obviously, another famous Australian who's done wonders in the world of cricket. Oh, look, I didn't really. I didn't really use any of his stuff. Um, the only one I, I sort of played on was the two for twenty-two type stuff. Yeah. Sure. And and I only and that was it. Any time the score was two for two two two, I would you know uh, tweet the scoreline if Australia was playing. But I didn't really use any of his of his stuff. Mm. Um, a lot of the followers would write to me with um, with uh, his stuff, but it was quite funny. I tried to bait him a lot um, to to follow me, and he never would. But I set up another false account called Bruce McAvaney who's an Australian sports commentator yeah. and he had probably 150 followers and um, the 12th man only follows 15 people and he just decided that he wanted to follow Bruce so I thought that was quite interesting I couldn't get him to follow Richie but he followed some random other fake account <laughs> but uh, yeah no, so I, didn't, I didn't use him for inspiration really I just as I said I sort of just took my own observations on mm. cricket put them in a Richie tone and threw them out there and for whatever reason it became popular Cool. Okay. Well, the next question is: When you started, you didn't you didn't say this is a parody? It was Richie, and then what? What was your bio line? It said uh, uh, "classic tweet that marvelous stuff" or something along those lines. Okay. So, when did you first get sort of the long arm of the law, so to speak, contacting you and saying what you were doing is well, we don't like it. Yeah. So your your um, Twitter lawyer that you had on earlier was spot on. I got a I got a. Uh, early days I probably had a couple of thousand followers I got asked to change my bio by Twitter mm-hmm. um, they give you 48 hours they just they, they send you out a performer type message to your email it says um, we think there's potentially some confusion with you and someone that might be real um, can you just please clear it up in your bio so then I put uh, I might have put marvellous parody that or something like that I just put the word parody in there and everything was fine okay, okay. Uh, right. I didn't so now- have to I didn't have to change the photo I didn't have to change my name um, I just had to write the word parody in there somewhere, and so I did. Okay, so you, you did the legal part, so you were fine there. But now something else sort of happened along the line. Was this content orientated? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I don't want to ask too many questions around that, and you can obviously yeah, no. sh- share with us how it all happened. But what what brought it down essentially? Um, so I actually feel like the El Capone of Twitter because. Um, I, I may have put out a, a tweet that was um, uh, misinterpreted by some certain people, but uh, and it wasn't my intention to offend anybody, even though it probably, in retrospect, was slightly offensive, and I and I should apologise. But um, Twitter shut me down the same week they shut down your friend Nishant Jossi um, out cricket mm-hmm. for copyright and trademark infringement. So it actually wasn't anything to do with impersonating Richie Benno. Right. It was after a bit of research that both Nishan and myself had done, we, we discovered that the ECB and the BCCI together had put in, um, and in my case also, I believe Cricket Australia had put in a, uh, a copyright infringement notice to Twitter based on me linking to some um, Rob uh, Moody um, YouTube cricket links that were under copyright of those respective bodies. And uh, Twitter have now refused to reopen that account based on those copyright infringements. Wow, that's uh, yeah, I was I was hoping for something a little bit dirtier than that, Dennis. Yeah, no, well that's about <laughs> as bad as it gets. Is it? it's, a, it's a little <laughs> bit yeah, Nick so Mallet getting fired for saying things about ticket prices. Ticket prices, of, yeah, yeah, instead of actual juicy uh, issues. But I mean, they're onto you then if you need to get it. Oh, that's okay, awful. but what what was on these links then? What was oh, the look? <laughs> uh, so there's a guy out there. He's t- uh, Twitter handle I think is um, Rob Robolinda two, and he and he has a library of over a million YouTube cricket takes and it's a brilliant youtube channel he has a million hits every time he puts a youtube thing up so you should follow him but um i was just linking to his 
um, videos. And what happened was probably the month before, this was during the Ashes, the ECB was writing to Twitter and YouTube and getting all his videos taken down that had the English, anything that had in English copyright on them. Um, and the only way they could force Twitter to shut me down, because I guess they just weren't liking what was going on, was... Um, and it was probably a little bit too controversial for the state cricket set here in Australia was uh, to get me on copyright infringement. And that's what happened. Sure. So Twitter, Twitter weren't uh, prepared to shut me down for impersonation or anything like that. Oh, okay. It was quite clear that I was a parody. But um, It was just the use of I content. Had, yeah, but I had inadvertently breached copyright and trademark infringement rules that they had. And um, uh, I guess they know where their bread's buttered. And <laughs> that was the end of Richie. But it was a, it was a funny 11 months. Okay, so now... <laughs> there's something uh, like we we touched upon um sean and i were just talking about now uh, of, with edmer as well is creating yeah. sort of financial gain through impersonating somebody and that it, it is still legal to say you know this is a parody and we're parodying stuff like that any interest in obviously being i mean like your, your twitter was comprehensive let's be honest you, you were doing things with the time off that you had that was very sort of profile orientated like you were richie for so long 11 months yes. generally any interest on, on on taking the joke a little bit further, seeing as you did such a good job at it? Uh, not as Richie. I uh, look. There were some side benefits. I, I've never had once considered myself as a, a journalist or a writer or a, um, an Australian random correspondent on internet radio. Yeah, for me South either. Africa, but um... <laughs> this is all a shot in the dark for me too, Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but but it opened a lot of doors. I mean, um, I, I wrote. I got to write as Richie and then as Dennis Friedman for some wonderful places. So um, I don't know if anyone knows about the Follow the Bounce blog, but <laughs> solid. I've heard amazing comments. things about it. Yeah, it's actually called the Bounce. For, so. um, <laughs> I actually started, and and thank you to um, a guy called Jeremy Irvine and, and Miles Harris, those blokes who run the Armchair Selector dot com. They it's a fabulous site. Um, yeah, wonderful site. Um, so they allowed me to write for them for a while. I had a gig, um, did a couple of nights when Australia played India on Test Match Sofa with Jeremy as well, mm -hmm. um, which was amazing. Um, I got to write as Richie for All Out Cricket, which is the second biggest selling cricket magazine in the world behind The Cricketer. Um, and, and they were fine with the parody. They sold it as a parody until the sort of um, unfortunate uh, misrepresented joke with Dean Jones and Farwood Ahmed. <laughs> Um, and and um, you know, to be fair to those guys there, Joe Harmon, who's the editor there, um, sent me a sent me a nice email. Sort of said we want to keep going, but uh, we're 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 um, scared of being linked to you because we might lose our media accreditation, and we're selling tours to the Ashes. So I can understand the commercial overlay. No, completely. <laughs> um, so there was that. Um, uh, it's, I'm doing uh, some local television this summer on um, the Sledge TV. Mm -hmm. Um, with a guy called Nick Hancock, who who, who runs a fantastic uh, show on Channel 31 here, and, and all the shows are on YouTube. So if you Google uh, or look on YouTube for the Sledge TV, it does some wonderful stuff. So it's opened a lot of doors for me and allowed me to do some some really interesting stuff and do have some interesting chats with people like yourselves, and I guess established to some degree a, a minute or minuscule amount of credibility in the cricket world for, for my for my name and my writing, which which has allowed me to have some do some fun stuff so well but it's in interesting Dennis, because essentially paris hilton kim kardashian they can make sex m movies <laughs> those celebrity sex tapes you just made a celebrity can, can parody a parody account on twitter yeah yeah but um <laughs> you don't like that analogy do you <laughs> well i'm, I'm now just re reflecting on that maybe i've gone down the wrong path <laughs> <laughs> no you're not making uh, a sex tape with a richie mask on <laughs> draw the line or something <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 to be fair, the only paid gig um, ha, has has been you, Ben. I think you paid me uh, the equivalent of sixty Australian cents to, to write a couple of pieces <laughs> that hopefully you donated to that children's charity I asked you to. But um, it's <laughs> I, 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 was having, um, I was having it's an interesting discussion about monetizing the concept. I was having a chat. Um, and I met some wonderful people through this on Twitter with um, the guy that runs the Not Ian Chapel um, account. And he's now up to a thousand followers and he, I, I won't give his identity away, but uh, he, he, apart from saying he's, he is or was a great cricketer, so he's a decent player. And he's been asking me, how do you monetize this thing? And I said, I've tried all avenues and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't see, if you, if you have the ambitions to start a parody and make money out of it, it's, it's not, it's probably the, um, the wrong path to go down, but uh if you want to have some fun with it, 
there's probably a couple of golden rules. One is make sure you follow the Twitter rules so you don't get shut down. Yeah, good start. Um, yeah, so I mean, there was the, the David Guerra account that was floating around through the ashes. He's been shut down too because he just um, went down the impersonation path. So, right. Yes, so and, he, and, and I'll be honest, be he fooled account. me as well. I thought it was the real David Guerra for a bit, so he wasn't making the parody well, aspect clear. If you can fool Sean, <laughs> then that guy needs to be brought, brought to book. <laughs> I think, uh, so there's that. I think you have to stick to your topic. I, I made a couple of mistakes getting into Australian politics and all kinds of stuff on my account. Mm. And if I did it again, I'll just stick to cricket and I'd stick to... Um, just trying to write as Richie would speak in that ye olde English style. And, yeah. and, and, you know, that worked for me. That helped me get followers. And I think the one thing that really helped me was I tried to engage with um, legitimate cricket people. Mm. Um, and one out of every four or five would write back and play along and have some fun with it. You know, hats off to guys like Kevin Peterson, Tom Moody, um, these kind of blokes who, who loved it. And that helps promote your account. But there's mm. also others that... Bumbles Lloyd wrote to me once and said you're a fake piss off and then banned me. Michael Vaughan didn't like me after a while because I kept calling him on his plagiarism. Um, <laughs> Dean Jones. Dean Jones obviously didn't like me very much. And if you're listening, Dean, I, I owe you an apology, but not because I wrote something I, I, I want to take back, but I apologise that you misinterpreted my tweet. Um, so so engage engage the cricket guys. They actually enjoy it. A lot of them, you know, they really enjoy chatting with, with, with the right guys. And then mm. the final thing is, be funny don't just write crap there's yeah, yeah. so many crap parodies out there that you start following because you think it could be good and and they're not and look as i said i'm no comedian uh, i don't think i was that funny i just stuck to a style and for whatever reason it worked well exactly that okay last question before we get into yes. just some like some general i put it on twitter what your favorite sporting parody is and there's been a variety of answers there really has been if you were to do a parody account now of somebody who would it be yeah uh, right now yeah Ooh, you got me on the hop. Uh, well, still, I don't think everyone here's got one. There is one. There is one. There's a there is one. There's, do, there's, there's, do a there's an reckon? at naught for 260. That's Imran Tahir. here. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfair. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> if I was doing a cricket one, I'd probably pick up Sashin. He's about to retire, so you could have a lot of fun with that. Um, that's there's so a true. One running, there's, oh. yeah, there's a Srinivasan one running around that at times can, can be quite funny. Um, I don't know. This, I'd probably go for something with some global reach, um, but I'm not an EPL fan really, and um, so I sort of lack the content knowledge. That's why I went to cricket. Yeah. Um, there's there's definitely a gap for someone to do a Richie one because it doesn't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> so but I, I, I think there's something really funny in, in in retired session. Retired session, <laughs> cool. Because he's got more time in his hands, he can tweet all day as well. That would be a really like, great yeah. parody for someone to pick up. Retired yeah. session. Can I ask a question? All right. About we've set the challenge. We've, we've set, set the, the challenge. challenge. You want oh, the other one is uh, Hansi Cronje. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> go big or go home. Jeez, At the, at yeah, the yeah, devil made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 uh, what, if you were going to do one, uh, Ben or Sean, what would, where would you go? Well, you've really opened it up now. I can't see from the grave. <laughs> it's, got, it's got a certain amount of the toys. <laughs> so, hey, look, don't you start. I, I think if someone... Uh, trolled through your uh, blog they'd find a wasn't there some sort of uh, film script about Hansi from the grave no Hansi lives and he, yeah it is actually I, that was one of the finest things I've ever written to be quite frank it was, it was, it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> it was well constructed at least with that. wow Sean if you were to make a parody with all your great sporting knowledge who would it be Oof, I, uh, I don't know. You see, there's a weird goal what you would reach here. There's only so much that you want for comedic value. You've got to weigh up if you want it for comedic value or for reach, you know? So, I mean, that's a massive question. But don't you here. think, first up, it wouldn't pay to have someone who's wildly famous? No. Because okay. if you look at some of the best Australian, like, um, Twitter parody accounts as well, you know, it's guys like like fake Nathan Horitz. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's, it's like, even like kind of yeah. C-grade cricketers it's cut so them off true. because they're very, very funny. You like, know? It it's not the fact that they're parodying someone famous. It's that the quality of the parody itself. It wouldn't be so funny having a Jean de Villiers parody, for instance. Yeah, it's got to be good. Well, well, you the, know? Yeah, the so. Nathan Horitz one's actually a good case study. So uh, he had about 3,000 followers and then came, outed himself as Dan Liebke. Yes, um, and now writes as Dan Liebke, and he's one of the funniest guys and he's, doing cricket on the internet. Yeah, he's um, fantastic. And he's just kept on Twitter, he's just kept the Nathan Horowitz picture, and just Dan Liebke to right. try to ease that, his followers into the idea that it's Dan Liebke, not, not Nathan Horowitz. I think that the most the most strange one I saw was a fake Richard Chiqui. So <laughs> that was the most bizarre it's one. So obscure. I saw. Very obscure. Yeah. So, the, you know, it, it, I think you need to do it for the right reasons. And, uh, um, 
you want to do it to entertain, I think, and um, and you need a you need a uh, you can't just sit there and tell jokes. You actually, I think what made the Richie one successful is that there was enough element in there that it could have been Richie talking. Because I got a lot of tweets from people saying, "I just read your tweets in Richie's voice, and it makes the experience so much better." Yeah, exactly. I got those type of tweets all the time. So I think you need to find a theme and stick with it. Like a U.S. cricket guy. I can't understand a word he says. I actually think he's Slavic or something. He, he can't be the American, but when if you read his tweets, he just sticks to his theme, which mm. is an American trying to explain cricket, and it's quite quite funny. So um, that'd be my advice. Oh, true, Sean. Back to you. I Cock just... on block. Who would you want to parody right now, if you could? If you had time, if you had time to do it. In a weird way, I kind of because because I write lots of things where I do like fake interviews with guys, and they yeah. often and it has to be published like this is a parody interview we didn't interview, etc. I do that for a couple of publications, and a guy I enjoy a lot is either like, I mean, I would have loved to have got hold of PW if I could at the time, mm. but there is one guy that could if I was in the parody bar. But I kind of like the idea of parodying Nick Mallet. Actually, yeah, rugby that's level. a good one because you can, now the, the thing is, like Dennis, you, you touched on it. Don't try tell jokes. That's yeah. the great thing is what you can use great sporting insights, Sean, which is your forte, and you can put it in such a way that it sounds kind of dismissive, perhaps slightly patronizing, and that's where the humor comes. And just be, and like in the case of like Dennis with Richie, just pick up the tone of someone, you know, like exactly. that kind of you know, like Richie yeah. going great tweet that marvelous. There I am. I'm there. I'm seeing. I'm seeing Richie Benno with the avatar and I know it's a parody. You know, if you can create that kind of thing, incorporate someone's language and not just be a forum for telling jokes, mm. as you say. Mm. Yeah. That exactly. Was, I, and I, 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 I played on the stats thing as well. Um, so I used a lot of stats and I think having, um, actually presenting some value in terms of what's going on in the cricket world rather than just some idiot trying to be funny helped it as well. The jokes were every only third or fourth thing. So when the matches were on, I'd, I'd grab stats. And a lot of them I'd Michael Vaughan and just steal from Moshan, the stats man, but um, and repackage them up. But uh, So it wasn't just about trying to be funny and tell jokes and laughing at myself and thinking how funny I was. It was yeah. um, A lot of it was like uh, old cricket does, pull out the interesting parts about the matches yeah. that's going on and, and pull that out. But So who's this guy? Who's this rugby guy? What's his story? Oh, Which, uh, Nick Mallett. Yeah. Oh, it's ex Springbok coach who's finds himself on the Supersport panel presenting all the games and just become kind of the voice, the kind of godfather of rugby yeah. opinion He's in this like country. He's like the authority you now. He says something, yeah. everyone writes about it. But anyway, so uh, guys, I, I just want to touch, the, the, the big reason I really want to chat to Dennis about this is that I'm all for creating great content. And, uh, and this is what the show's also about now, showcasing guys who are doing this because there's enough shit content out there. Now, Dennis, if, to touch on what made that parody account really great, I think we can all learn from that, whether it be something that we're doing for a brand perspective, something that we're doing for just for a laugh, or something that we're doing just to enrich um, sport as far as like a reporting thing is concerned. And you touched on all these things, consistency, good sporting content, and you're picking up a tone of something. I think we can all learn that, whatever Twitter account we want to do, personal, professional, private joke. And it's, it's, it's something that I think, um, I mean, I've always looked to do with, with my sports writing as well. First and foremost, you're writing about sport and you're covering something people need information from. How you present it is very secondary. So you can't just go in with jokes and loosely associate sport with it. And I think it's a very no, no, good point true. you make. And people can actually learn that from all the readings and, and writings they have around sport. Yeah, there was, I think you're dead right. Um, I think it took me a while to actually understand some of this stuff because I used to just, um, I was a chronic retweeter of just things I found funny and I the other thing I did which I got criticised a bit for towards the end and um, one particular um, account this week's come at me and written some articles about it but um, I, I, I learned not to um, I didn't interact as much with the proletariat as I did with the people that actually had the blue ticks against their name um, because I found that clogging up people's Twitter feeds with conversations lost me people lost me followers but yeah. when I was having conversations with okay. the people that had the blue ticks, people were, I don't know, in their own little world, were loving the fact that maybe or maybe not um, Ian Bell thinks this is the real Richie. Um, <laughs> knowing full well that um, Ian Bell's having a chat with me and, you know, it's not the real Richie. But uh, I think that was that little bit of mystique that came with it. But the consistency of your approach and not getting lost and getting sidetracked in how you yeah. present the material um, is very important. You, you're right. Okay. Well, look, we need to, pin need to pinch it off from here, um, Dennis, but just to go through some of the accounts that, I mean, parody accounts, the Vengard Knows Best, that's a good yes. account, Sam, because again, he's doing just that. He's not trying to make jokes, trying to be funny, but and it comes, comes back to it. If you read the tweets in Vengard's voice, it's unmistakably him, and I think that's a really great quality. Uh, we yep. have to touch on, on Coach Divi, um, 
probably my my favorite South African parody site by by far. Again, read it in his voice. It's him speaking. That what the guy's done is, uh, Dennis, our ex Springbok coach was a guy called Peter de Villiers. I'm sure if huh. you Google him, you'll find some very interesting things, uh, especially at press conferences where he used. Just, just Google Peter de Villiers just, quotes. Just, yeah, just yeah. go Peter de Villiers quotes. Now, what uh-huh. he's done is that he is a very well learned rugby individual, and he, his timing with the tweets is, is so, so good. Whether it's during live games, big announcements, or just the general state of SA rugby, he's on the money. Again, Coach Divi, he says he's a parody account and his following has really grown. I mean, it's, it's just tremendous. And I think he's really adding to the sporting landscape. Sean, any of your particular favorites before we go off the subject? Well, there's so many Australian guys that I, I think hit the market, which is one thing I was just interested by with Dennis is why is it that so many Australian Twitter guys on? And the guys that stand out for me well, are... Dennis said as, in the beginning, you got made redundant. No, <laughs> there's a gap in the market. <laughs> <laughs> but take a guy like a, a guy like not David Warner, that yeah. that is a very very sharp account. He does all these um, he does all these pictures of kind of fake film posters and cricket context. And that's but brilliant think about Twitter why that content. Work, Sean is uh, again he's just focused on Photoshop. Mm. Yeah, that's so true. So he takes he takes current affairs in cricket, makes it into a Photoshop or a movie poster, and that's all he does, and it, uh, and does it beautifully. He, yeah, he, you're right. Great he's, he's a ripper. Not trying too hard. USA soccer guy. I've seen some tweets with him. Yeah, yeah. and a cricket one as well. And a cricket one yeah. as well. Um, yeah, again, that Wenger knows best for me. It, like, it gives me all I need to know about football at any given stage because he'll just pick it up. And of course, being an Arsenal fan, it really helps. Yeah, look, there's plenty out there. And I think if they all follow the guidelines that we've expressed today, I think it's always a good place for it. And as Emma said in the, in the first interview of the section, is that some of her f- like favorite interactions on Twitter are through parody accounts. So if guys keep doing it right, keep egos aside. And again, you know, Dennis said it, don't try to look for commercial gain because then you got to compromise. So yeah. it's not going to be a great thing. <laughs> Dennis, thanks so much for your time. If you, if you ever, sorry, you want to have a last po- point there? I was just going to say, I think the best parody out there, and it's not a sporting one, it's Tweet of God. Yeah. Um, and so if you want to watch, uh, to follow something, it's just going to make you laugh, irrespective of the mood you're in on the day, and irrespective if you go to church or not, Tweet of God is the one to follow. You know, my favorite part about the Tweet of God, you know, it's got millions of followers, and it follows one person, and it's Justin <laughs> Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well, there's so many so many avenues for comedy on Twitter. Dennis, thanks so much. Yes. If you ever do another parody account, let us know. We won't out you or anything like that, but you, your work has been great. And I think it's just shown how Twitter is becoming such a big part of sports. And we really do congratulate you on your original work because there's just not enough of it out there. Um, but yeah, oh, well, thank you. Cash Dennis, the actual person. Oh, I keep moving my chair here. Um, <laughs> Cash Dennis, the real person, at Friedman Dennis. And, of course, we'll have him back here quite soon because Australia, at some stage, are going to go play England again in the Ashes, even though they're prepping for it by filming cellular telecommunications adverts in India while uh, hanging out with Sasha. <laughs> I'll just, just, I'll just parting, Ben. If you do choose to follow me, make sure you read my tweets in my voice. It adds to the experience. <laughs> <laughs> Completely, Dennis. Thanks so much. <laughs>